Can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in health psychology? I noticed that especially lately you've been working on cancer and, and smoking in particular and how that evolved for you? Yeah, from, uh, from the beginning my interest was um, poor people and their health and their problems. Mm -hmm. That's why I was a chem major. But I could find new ways to produce foods and medicines. And I think I was an idealistic 16 year old skipping mm -hmm. grades and going to college. And mm -hmm. I thought I was going to like solve everything in the chemistry lab. <laughs> All I had to do was put on a white coat, go into the chemistry lab, and I was going to fix everything. <laughs> and so the interest in um, the health and the health problems of uh, the poor was was my original motivator. Mm -hmm. And so that never went away. Mm -hmm. And so I worked at Women Incorporated, and those women had multiple um, health problems. In graduate school, I couldn't really, there wasn't really health psychology as a field, and so it wasn't possible at the mm -hmm. time that I was in graduate school, there was no such thing. Uh, uh -huh. um, and so it wasn't possible to pick a physical health topic, so I just took mental health in general, and as soon as I was done, I went back to physical health issues. Mm -hmm. I think behavioral medicine as a discipline emerged in what, um, 80? Three, four, something like that. I would already had a PhD. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't. It didn't exist before that. I think the Journal of Behavioral Medicine's first issue was in 1985, mm. and so. But I started graduate school in '77, so so there was no such thing. So the interest was always there. It wasn't actually possible. It wasn't easy to pursue such interest until the disciplines um, emerged, mm. and the disciplines emerged after I had finished. Okay. And then I immediately went back to working on those topics. Okay. You know, I, I was a, a kid in a slum with parents who didn't finish high school. When both of my parents were very sick. Everyone around me was sick. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't psychiatric. I guess some people were depressed, but that was minor right. um, relative to how sick everyone was. Mm -hmm. um, my parents died before I graduated from college mm -hmm. um, because they were poor people who were sick. So um, neither of my parents made it to anywhere near as old as I am. I am so much older than <laughs> either of my, my parents ever lived to be. It's, mm -hmm. it's weird. I look at photos of them and I am way older than like, they are in, in pictures. Mm -hmm. But uh, So I always had an interest in health. Okay. Uh, but at the time that I was in school, health was not an area within psychology. And I didn't have any advising to suggest public health to me mm. as a field. Yeah, it sounds like a lot uh, of the research is in that area. Yeah, and I had no advising. If I did my career over again and mm. actually knew what all of the options were, mm -hmm. and also knew that I would never make it as a chemistry major without <laughs> high school trig, I probably would have gone to school in health science and public health. Mm. I probably would have bypassed psychology altogether. Mm. I still consider getting a degree in public health, and uh, people keep telling me, why bother, you know, you're on the public health faculty, mm -hmm, you can't mm -hmm. go get a degree, but that perspective is certainly closer to my own perspective mm -hmm. than a perspective, in, than a psychological perspective. I, I mean, I don't I, really believe that, that internal psychological factors like beliefs and, mm -hmm. and attitudes and uh, knowledge are the major factors that account for people's health status or people's health behavior even. I mean, not only as a radical feminist and a radical Marxist, but as a behaviorist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my underlying assumption is that environmental contexts determine people's behavior. And that's really a public health point of view. Yes. 